ETD, and yeah, he has um, he has actually contributed a lot. I learned the project is actually on HTML5 JavaScript, and it has been used uh, on uh, coming up with different apps and all that on how to teach students physics. Then he is here today to present to us on the open source physics in Singapore. Without further ado, may I invite Mr. Vito to present to us. Kinematics car 
HTML5. Did I say it was a magic show? Can you, can you get it? It's quite cool, isn't it? I mean, Google is so smart that it knows that you're here and you're going to Google probably something that is relevant to what I may want to share and then it shows it up as, a, as one of the first few relevant hits. So I want you to click on this second link, or the first link I mean. Usually, there's a paid ad, you know, a paid advertisement, so that will be on top. So you have to be discerning enough to filter through. So if you click on the second link, it will bring you to this particular page. Okay, it says Open Educational Resources, Open Source Physics. And there's this wealth of information here. So you may want to click on any of these. Oh, this is a blank, okay, but maybe there's an app that I would like. Okay, so down here you can click on the app. And you can click on this other app. And it brings you to the respective pages if there is an app. So this is a, an app at the Google Play. And this is on the iTunes. Okay. So I want you to click on this picture. Okay, click on the picture. And thanks to the fast internet at NJC, you see the simulation in front of you. So we have done some research on this simulation and uh, I thought it's a good time to show it because I just uh, polished it this year. So you can see that you can drag the screen. One of the better things you can do is you can drag the screen and it moves. And it allows you to reposition the screen. Okay? Because user interface is important. You'll be amazed huh, if the student don't like it, they don't quite want to use it and explore. So it has to be user friendly. If you use your two finger, because I don't have a mobile phone with me, if you use your two finger and you try to pinch outside the car, it can actually zoom in and out natively. Okay, this is possible thanks to my collaboration with the Professor Felix sitting in front of you. Okay, he's uh, from Spain. Professor Felix is from Spain, and we've been working on this uh, for the past one month. Okay, so these are some of the cool features that he has added. Okay, so first thing I, I would like to show you um, that you can actually get students to do learning pretty quickly by allowing them to select a drop-down menu. So if you design an app, you have to think of how the user will want to interact. Because last time we used to have sliders. Do you remember simulation as sliders? You don't see sliders now, right? Because the, the sliders are all hidden here. So you can drag on the velocity and it increases the speed. You can drag on the acceleration. Ah, there seems to be something here, but never okay. So you can drag on it, and you can see the numbers next to integers. Because for young and novice learners, they can't deal with the many, many digits at the back. So we made it quite easy for them to use. So they only have to deal with real numbers, uh, numbers that are integers. So they can click. So when you drag on this, it becomes user defined. Okay, let me just, if, when anything goes wrong, what do you do? As a teacher who first time see this, maybe you're so impressed already, you say, well, I must go back and use it. What's the first thing that you must know about the app, the simulation? Reset. Reset, yes. Thank you for your response. Yeah. Okay. The reset button is very important because without the reset button, things go wrong, you cannot go back. Okay. So when you click reset, it goes back to the original sim. Now from it's, it's quite Intuitive, I believe, so you can select uniform speed too and get the student to click play and they can explore what is the physics about. So we believe that uh, having this type of design is actually quite intuitive and we made it such that it's one the world view. So there is no ambiguity, there is no complexity, complexity of the graphs yet. Okay? Then we can say, okay student, you can just look at the graph. Okay? And it has all these motion dots. And if let's say the students say, okay, I still don't quite get it, then you can invite them to click reset, choose another option. Let's say uniform velocity v equal to minus one. 
And then now you can see the real world motion with the scientific graph. It gives them this um, ability to transit from worldview to a scientific graph that we want them to be familiar with. So remember, we had that sleepy classroom, the lecture, and then there was this curved thing, you know. So it was quite difficult for people to appreciate. But I thought having this design would help. And now if you notice the car has gone out of screen, you can now drag. Oh, the car has kept on going, wow. The car has gone all the way until 80. Okay? And likewise for here, you can also drag all the way to the end. Okay? So these are some of the design features that we have built. If you don't like it, uh, you can always, uh, it's an open source project, so you can always tweak the source code to fit to your own curriculum. Maybe 80 and minus 80 is not the, the dimension of the, the simulation that you like, you can narrow it lower. I'm going to show you another cool stuff. So let's say, for example, uh, I want to investigate motion speed equal to 1. Okay. It automatically pauses at the end of the screen because we don't want to make it too difficult for the student. There's this button here that says store, store data. If you leave your mouse there long enough, it will show up. So you store data. And now you can select another run. Maybe something more difficult. Okay. And you can see now the student can now compare the motion earlier on with the new motion. So we believe this kind of ability to represent the motion if we did the same graph allow them to understand what is happening. Then you'll be wondering, oh Lawrence, okay very nice, but my student need to learn velocity. So you just have to invoke the velocity option and it will show up. So all the physics phenomena can be shown uh, graphically. Now bear in mind that when we made this, it was meant for the handphone. So you should be able to see quite nicely on the handphone. If it doesn't, please let me know, because I would like to know uh, what are the improvement is required. Okay? So far, so good. Impressive. Impressive. <laughs> okay. uh, it doesn't stop here. Okay. We, we like to show you something that we have gone a little bit further because part of the theme was about breaking new frontiers and I would like to show you some of the newer things that we have been doing. Uh, this is a concept test. Okay? When we click on a concept test, we can actually script using the simulation tool that we have made to present the same word problem that you saw at the beginning of the presentation the classroom of the epithet graph and then now we, we show the student the same scenario we say a car moves along a straight track the plot shows the position as a function of time the trail shows the position of that car which option is correct? so if the student were to choose the wrong answer let's say I'm a... okay, how many of you think the answer is A? okay, one anybody after two? how many people think the answer is B? Uh, how many is C? No C's? How about D? For the really clever student, maybe they like to choose D, right? <laughs> okay. So, I, I, I heard some A's, okay, so A, huh? A, okay, A. So you can type in small A, big A, it's, we can script it so that it's clever enough. Excellent choice, wow. Well done. Okay, so we can even design feedback to give to the students. Now you might say, okay, this is wonderful, but how do I use it as a teaching tool? So you can actually invoke, remember you click reset, huh? reset, select the option concept test 1. So instead of accepting the default question, you can invoke this graph, and now you can see the effect of the same physics. Do you notice the car actually slow down when you invoke the world view? Okay, let's look at it again. Huh? Okay, I have not heard of that one before. A little bit of physics humor. Uh, okay, so I want to use concept test one. Okay, select my own option. Okay. So we believe that simulations are quite useful. Okay. And if it is well designed, you can put in your own variable choice. You can put in your own assessment. 
uh, and you can all collect all this information and then uh, give them the appropriate feedback. So if I were to be a, a naughty student, I would say, okay, I, I don't think I know anything, I keep something funny, and you no, know, we can even be, you can even program your own humor. Let's say you tell your students certain jokes, you can put it in a humor, because it's an open source project, you can tweak the feedback. Okay. So I have shown you quite a bit. Um, okay. So I thought this is a good way to start off the, the presentation to show you an activity. Okay, using a readily available resource. By the way, we can we can do this for mathematics, uh, chemistry. I'm not I'm not a, I'm not a chemistry teacher, so I can't I can't do it alone. I I will need your help. And biology, I, I would need your inputs, okay? But if it is a mathematical evolution, you know, it's a simulation of sorts, I think we can probably uh, work out something. Okay, so thank you for your participation. I hope you have some fun with your handphone. Did, did it work? I didn't get a chance to walk around, but did it work? Did it work? You had a great time? Is it? You obviously had a good time. <laughs> Does it work? Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, so it works on Android, it works on iPhone. Uh, yeah, it, it just works on any of the mobile devices. Okay. So this is uh, this is in case internet fail me. So I thought I'd prepare some slides. So this is the, the basic setup. You can do multiple, did you see the multiple experiments? Okay. Then we can do visualize word problems. These are the word problems. And uh, student can, this, I did show you, you can drag to set your own inquiry. Okay, and it's very intuitive. The student don't have to look for cumbersome stuff and then you know, you just, you want to change velocity, just drag. You want to move the car, just drag the car. You know, it's designed with a uh, user uh, experience in, in mind. And one of the newer stuff, the new frontier that I'm talking about, is the ability to give multiple choice. Uh, you can give word, structured word, but it will be harder to break. Okay. Oh, I didn't show this. Huh? Oh. Can I tell you a joke? Okay, obviously I can. Huh? Okay, I can tell you a joke. <laughs> Okay, um, last, last year Singapore was awarded the UNESCO Prize for Pedagogical Innovation. Uh, but not many people really know what it is about. So you are going to be the first few to, to see the Pedagogical Innovation that UNESCO gave uh, Singapore the prize for. Uh, let me show you the Pedagogical Innovation. Huh? Okay. Now there's something here that's hidden. We, we, we hide it, not because we didn't want you to know, we hide it because we don't want to overload the information. You get what I mean? Okay? So we hide it, but if you have the you have the future ready or this paradigm at the back of your mind, then this is the option we would like you to invoke. It's called show model. So what does show model do? Okay, can I get anyone uh, which option you want to try? Option one. At rest, option two, velocity equal to one. What option do you like to try? Let's let's take some risks. Let me test whether I know my physics. What option is uh, exciting, breaking new frontier? Deceleration. Sorry, I, I can't miss up. Acceleration. Okay, that that would be this one, right? Okay. Yeah, something simple. Yeah, good. Okay, so this acceleration, when you select it, at the back we will script such that it shows the acceleration. Now we can click play. Here we can click play. Uh -huh, it shows the motion of the selected physics. Now we can use this thing called the show model. We can actually let the student try. So we ask the student, this is a, imagine this is a very weak student. Remember this pedagogical innovation. Huh? So you can't expect innovation unless it's hard, right? So we start off with what does the student know? So what would the student propose? 
um, something like x equal to x equal to one. I think that's that's quite simple, right? Oh, there's no one. Huh? Okay, let me let me type in here. Okay, x equal to two, x equal to four. So you, you can start off with whatever the student knows in the beginning, and then then you tell the student, observe your model, x equal to four. That means it's always at position four meters away from the origin all the time. Does this model look like the motion that was uh, phenomenon? Was, was simulated acceleration equal to 1 so anybody would have some sense to see that this line and this line do not match therefore whatever the student has proposed is not an adequate model of the physics of acceleration equal to 1 right? so how would you propose making changes to make it more like the motion. Yeah, I'm going to start the ball rolling by introducing a key variable called t. Because t is time. Okay, we need time. Because without time, a lot of things can't be done. So, 4t will produce a graph like that. Okay. Any other smart student would like to propose another model? Yes. T square. Thank you so much. So we remove this. We put T square. Okay. So wow. As a teacher, I am extremely pleased when my students do this because the students' model is getting closer. Not perfect, as you can see, but getting closer. So is it too big or too small your model? Too big, right? Is is the green? The green is bigger, right? So you have to propose a strategy to make it smaller, right? So how can we make it smaller? Excellent. Okay, divide by half. So it's the same as multiply by zero point five in the in the beginning, right? Okay, and it's a perfect match. Okay, let's try it all over again. Can we give a round of applause for the lady in the back? Now, when it comes to teaching and learning, these are the kind of little celebrate, little successes and celebrations that you must have with your student. Because that is where you ignite your confidence to, to be able to learn better. Okay? So we have coming back to the pedagogical innovations, we have made it available on the simulation. So you can try this out. Okay? So there is actually no you you can as long as it's a mathematical equation, it will work. But I think I got not much time, so I will just show you something like this. Huh? So I can actually do. How many of you are familiar that science is uh, science has random errors? Okay, wouldn't it be cool if the simulation I make and you will use or customize have this ability to show random uh, scientific errors? Okay, so one way is you can actually multiply this. Okay, don't be afraid of coding. Eh? Remember the earlier presentation, don't be afraid of coding. It's, it's quite simple. So, random, R, R, A, N. I think as long as you know Excel, you should be able to type something like that. Okay, random. Okay. Now, when you type random, it, random, it renders a number from 0 to 1. So, you have to subtract half. Okay, I think I didn't do it correctly. Eh? Uh, what was that? Hang on. Eh? Oh, the magic, huh? Let's let's make amplify the, the error. Oh, isn't it cool? The model that you propose can actually show up as random error. So let me just quickly do it do it the final show. Huh? Pay attention to the green dot, the green dot over here, okay, and see how it moves. 
Was it too fast? Did you see it make the jiggery motion?
that you can create a new dynamic model. Okay. In this dynamic model, K is red color, it has no force. I'm going to make the font bigger. Okay, so in this particular model, I have to close it. Huh? So you can see that when you propose a model, there's a red dot here. It doesn't do anything. Why? Because as physics teacher, you will know that this is the very first thing that you teach your student. Newton's which law? First, right? Anything that doesn't move in the absence of force will not move. Okay? So that's Newton's first law. Now, if it is not clear to the student, then maybe we can change the color. Uh, let's choose yellow. And that is yellow now, okay? And I can actually make it move. Oh, sorry. Uh, I can actually make it move a little bit lower, minus zero point one arbitrarily. Uh, so that you can see the impact of the student's model. The model now is y equals to minus zero point one. So very vividly, the yellow dot now is lower. Okay. If you don't believe me, you think I'm putting a fast one. Okay, minus two. Okay. See ya. Yeah. Yeah. So, maybe now the students say, okay, teacher, Mr. V, is the motion constant speed? Okay, constant speed. So, then we will ask the student, okay, if you think that the speed is indeed constant, then maybe you should look at the initial speed. Don't give it any force, but just change the speed. Okay, maybe, what's the from the audience, any number? What what number? Two? Okay. Two, huh? Two. Okay. Nice visuals of the model that the student proposed. I'm going to pause it for a while. I'm going to change it back to this. Okay, I'm going to compare with the model that we just made. Ignore the models at the top. Because those models are those I make in preparation to teach students, but because you are um, my audience, so I will create a new model. Okay. So now you can see with just a few quick model building processes, like changing the initial speed, it actually shows the student's model, uh, which is uh, velocity x equal to two, and then it's superimposed with the original motion. So if I can pause the motion of the the video, okay, you can see that the, the girl is roughly here, or the object that the girl is holding, but the model I think is somewhere here already. It's a lot further. Uh, it's, it's here, right? Correct. Let me increase frame by frame. Okay. So in other words, this model building process allows the student to think what is the answer to the physics equation because now instead of just x equal to 2 it could have been uh, okay because the screen is really big huh? I, I need the screen to be smaller give me a minute Res resolution problem, huh? I have to tell Douglas. <laughs> okay, let me try again. Huh? Uh, okay, I can't get to the bottom of the screen because... Oh, okay, okay. I, I have to hide this, is it? Auto hide. Ah, okay. It was difficult. Okay. So now I can propose using using a tracker. You can propose a number which is now. I was going to ask again. Do you think the number should be smaller or bigger? But tracker makes it so easy for the student to figure out 
you could just click here and hold and drag. Okay, can you see? As the number change dynamically, it plots a new model. You can go negative. So I'm going to introduce a decimal place. And I'm going to use tracker to now drag on this part. So I'm going to make it smaller. Let's say 1.3. Let's take a look. And I'm going to make the video run until the end. Okay, somewhere here. So now I'm going to increase tracker. Okay, I'm going to move it to this part here and move it 1.4, 1.5, okay, 1.50. I'm going to increase until 1.53 because that's where roughly you can see that the beginning and the end will match. Okay, so this is the, this is the slow but important process to help students to understand. Because now we just start with whatever they know. We don't jump straight away to acceleration. We start with what they know. Then after that, we ask the student, what else do you think need to be changed? And any, would you give me a hand? What, what do you think can be changed? Acceleration, thank you. Okay. So to introduce acceleration, then we have to introduce F because Newton's famous second law says F equal MA. Right? F equal MA. So if M is 1, so it literally makes it A. So I will now change the number here. So maybe say the number is 0 0.9. Okay. And you can see that now 0 0.9 makes the makes the model too fast. And you see that the the girl is here but the model is here. In other words, we need to tweak the model bigger but okay we need to tweak the numbers in order to make the model work okay as you can see I'm struggling to make the, the model match, it is a good thing. Because if it was easy, then the student would not have to come for my class. Right? Because exactly it might help. But um, I'm going to do a cheat code. Okay? I'm going to show you the answers for the acceleration. Huh? I'm going to make this visible. Okay? I'm going to make the yellow one disappear. Sorry, the, the A will disappear. Okay, so we just look at the new model. Okay, now this model now I'm we're not going to compare with my model A. So now this model here, for some reason, um, now matches the beginning but not the end. Can you see? Okay, the reason for the model is because in my model. Model C, I actually have an initial speed of 0 0.2898, but now the acceleration is 0 0.965 times 2. So for those of us who teach physics and who use tracker, there is this thing called the analysis tool that you can invoke, and then you can get those numbers from the basket trend line. Okay. So you can fit those numbers in and you can get a pretty nice model. Okay. So if I am a I am the physics student who did this, I will be super thrilled. Super, really, aesthetic. Theory matches practice. Whatever I propose actually match the real data. I as a student I'll be super thrilled. Whatever I'm proposing actually makes sense. Okay? But um, because this is real world physics, the student actually, the actually, actually the student or from the video perspective, the, the student actually went into a constant speed. Can you see? She actually went into a constant speed, not the uniform acceleration that she wanted. So, 
using the very powerful tracker software, you can actually propose a better model and I'm going to explain to you the model. Maybe I'll let you see the model first. Huh? I'll let you see the model. Okay, this model in the bottom is a near perfect match to the real data. Okay, and how was it achieved? It was achieved by a statement, some of us be quite computational thinking. I mean, I do not know what you want to call this, but this is just a simple if statement. <laughs> so if time is lesser than 0 0.8 seconds, it will have this amount of acceleration, or this amount of force. Okay? Because mass is equal to 1, so it's mass 1, therefore force is equal to acceleration. It will be equal to this acceleration, or else it becomes 0 which actually the zero part makes it the Newton's first law and Newton's second law for the first 0 0.8 seconds so in other words, if the student and you have struggled have really struggled with the mathematics get the final trend that fits the real data quite nicely I would be very surprised uh, if you tell me your student had no idea how she got this because something must have gone into her, or oh sorry, I mean her or his student mind that this critical moment called 0 0.8 is the part where the motion start to change from a uniform acceleration to one which is uniform uh, speed, uniform velocity. Okay. So to recap video analysis, okay, we take data from the real world. We use a model building pedagogy. So, so those of you who use tracker, I did a fact check. Not many people are familiar with uh, model building. So this could be something quite uh, new. Okay. So I, I, I personally I vouch for it. I've seen it at work. I've been working with NJC, I've been working with Raffles Girls. The kids really do benefit from such an activity because it is not simply typing out a report to fill up to get a grade because the student really need to struggle and find out and through the tweaking of the numbers they actually do see the relevance of learning physics now because everything starts to make sense rather than if it was presented in a book it sort of like deep knowledge is it but this is a life Okay, so model building, we start with uniform, uniform speed, no force. Then later on, we, we went on to a, a acceleration, a force with some initial speed. Then finally, we built, we climax, huh? climax with this final equation that seems to describe the physics of that particular video. And that is where I think uh, either you love it or or you will not maybe overwhelmed because it is a difficult pedagogical move. Okay, it is not easy. Okay, so let me move on. Uh, okay, I keep track of time. Okay, I have user issues, so um okay, I think this is fun. Okay, let's let's do it. Can you do Joe stationary HTML5? Okay, Joe stationary. Joe stationary HTML5 okay. It will bring you to our satellite simulation okay. okay, and in this simulation again it has the usual apps somewhere if it's not there, oh, is it this one? No. Yeah, okay, apps is here, okay. So you have your Play Store app and your Apple apps. Oh, Apple apps I don't have. Okay, never mind. Okay.
Okay, so in this 3D environment, which you can navigate in your handphone, you can actually pinch to zoom or out, but be careful when you zoom too far out, because it, it actually shows something weird like this. Okay, do not be frightened. Okay, just zoom back in, because you have gone. I use a, a wrapper, a spear to wrap the text, the texture, the picture. So if you zoom too out, you're actually looking at the outside of the of the outer space. So you will go back into the the sphere. Okay, okay, okay. So in this simulation, again, it's quite intuitive. We hope the students select the option. So how many of how if you like America, okay, then you can see that uh, this is now in America, the continent of America. You can zoom in to see further. Okay, is it America? Looks like it is, huh? Okay, and you can select. You can select to invoke another object. Now you select. Uh, Africa. So you can see that the concept that we are trying to illustrate the student is now shown vividly, and because it is shown in 3D, in the in the school that I've gone through, the, the student learned this. This is the simulation for them to remember. They, they will say, "Wow, this is the one that sort of clicked with me." Because what they used to see was a static picture. It was like this. It was like this. And then you not know, all the physics principle and <laughs> ideas all start flooding them in words. They couldn't appreciate what was happening because it was in a 2D plane of a 3D phenomena. So we make this simulation to help. So you can pan around, you can zoom in, you can pan around, you can look around. So it starts to make sense. Okay. So uh, I hope you like this little simulation. Is to show um the effects of certain satellites. Okay, so we can even design wrong physics. Okay, how how many of you can see this more vividly? We can show wrong physics. This is impossible. So one reason why you should use simulation because you can show wrong physics. Real world you can't, right? Oh, real world you can't show wrong physics. But in this simulation, it is not possible for this object. To go in this particular orbit, any brave soul want to try the answer why? Any brave soul going once? Think think along uh, think along the lines of Newton's uh, second law. I give a hint. I give a draw a very big hint. Okay, for this circle, the yellow object. The yellow circle. What you go in that circle? It must has a. It must have a force that is pointing towards the center of that yellow circle of it. So why is this motion not possible in the absence of extra propulsion? Physics teacher. <laughs> the force should point towards the earth. Yeah, great answer. I love it. I love the big audience, thank you so much. Okay, so we can actually now you see I'm quite helpless, right? Because if I can show a simulation but the student don't respond, then the lesson has failed. So what I can do is I can design uh, where is my forces? Ah, free body diagram. Okay, free body diagram. So in other words, we can actually show visualization of the forces of the we can show the forces from Earth to the satellite, and then we point the student to notice that if this is the force, and that yellow circle can't possibly move in that way, because it has to move in a, a funny orbit with the circle with the center of the Earth as a center, unless it has a special propulsion system. Okay, if not, this is not possible. So this is how far my research has been able to push the frontier in allowing students to make meaning. We can create wrong scenario. We make some pretty cool stuff uh, that are also available. Then we get the student to see the pattern. Okay, they the student generally love this particular uh, scene. 
Okay, because I don't have much time. Okay, so uh, very quickly, this is the URL for all the resources. I only show you two, I believe. Right, the car and the jurisdiction. We have 300, like the movie. Okay, we have 300 here. So in this particular URL, okay, again, you can Google open source physics at Singapore. It should appear as your one of the first seat as a website. If you do not want to remember, then this is the I will circulate a slide to the to the committee. Okay. If you're on the Android ecosystem, search for the word called Open Source Physics Singapore, and you can see a host of many many simulations which are created by us, myself, and uh, Professor Felix. Okay. Without him, a lot of my work would have never been so polished. You, you understand? It would not have that punch, that extra you know, usability and all that. So I really have to thank my dear friend here. Okay, if not, uh, yeah, I'll be just talking about unpolished stuff. Okay. So if you have my slides, you just click on the link, you will send you to the URL. Okay. If you're on the <coughs> iOS Apple system, then you can search for my real name. Not Lawrence, huh? Lawrence, you will find nothing. <laughs> okay. Uh, my real name is Lu Kang. My surname is Wee. So to the Americans, I mean the rest of the world, is the first name first, then followed by the surname. Okay. So you have to be aware of such nuances. Okay. So you will see a lot of other apps here. Can okay, we also um, the work that I do is HTML5, is JavaScript. So we are able that within the open source physics community, we are able to generate the same within the same simulation. We can add text, add pictures, and it can become an ebook. Okay, it doesn't currently we don't have uh, multiple choice, but the ebook has um, simulation inside it, and the text will accompany it. Okay, this is the Google book. Okay, it's the same two books. So you write the code once, and generate for many platforms. So in summary, uh, I would like to impress you that the traditional schooling system that we have does need an overhaul. Like what our minister said, it's, a, it's amazing how Arcadian our examination are still is. I'm not surprised if you include teaching and learning, right? I mean, we are all in the classroom. Sometimes we do have to go back to the traditional form. But it doesn't hurt if you are proficient in using technology to use some of this technology effectively. Because technology itself cannot teach. But technology can amplify your teaching. So if you use some of the materials that I have made, do communicate and network with me. I believe we can make the resources more robust so that this can benefit the wider audience uh, within uh, our teaching fraternity here in Singapore as well across the globe. So these are some of the things I've made. So you may, you may have seen that the simulations are dynamic. The student can build math model that can easily visualize. And uh, how, how do we have a teacher end-to-end -end coherent resources? Because through the e-book, my collaborators are Yishun, Yishun Junior College, uh, River Valley High, uh, Victoria Junior College, and Innova JC. So all of them basically use the same e-book with varying degree of successes. I won't, I won't lie to you, varying degree of successes. In YJC, it was the most successful because the lecture note was from them. Okay, So if you use it, you have to use it discerningly. Don't don't use it whole wholesale unless you revamp your your notes to sync with the ebook. So you do need to customize the ebook. These resources are released under open source, so you can download the authoring toolkit. You can get it. You can get all the source code. You can recompile the ebook all over again. So uh, we have to date some apps to ebooks only. Okay, so to get to them, just use the keyword open source basic in Singapore. Uh, with that, thank you so much for your time.
the old code was on JavaScript. I see now moving to more HTML5. Is that going to be consistent with all of these? Sorry, how do you? The old code was all in JavaScript, and now it's HTML5. Is that the new platform? Oh, okay. Uh, I apologize for the confusion. Okay, basically. Okay, basically, JavaScript is the scripting language that is part of HTML5 uh, compliance. I mean, it is the, the same thing. We use the word JavaScript because JavaScript is the is a language that we use to program the interactivity, how the simulation moves. These are all JavaScript. But JavaScript itself plus CSS, I mean, if you are familiar with the, with the words I use, CSS, cascading, style sheet, and uh, even the video in a different format. So all of them actually make up this family of uh, standards called HTML5. So this HTML5 standard is what enables your handphone to run uh, content that we make. We, we use HTML5 because it's easier to understand, but JavaScript is a smaller family. Yeah, uh, yeah um, regarding just now when you show the tracker app, like, there are a lot of variables in terms of how the student can uh, put numbers in that play. As a like, decimal place, like you can up to four and stuff. So my question would be like, how as a teacher, when when you step, because surely there are so many parameters, when you come and step in and you know, because students will have all kinds of you know, show different numbers and they may not necessarily build the model that, that, that it is fit the actual data. So how do you then actually step in to track that? If not, like, you know, just be just throwing numbers without appreciating the actual equation or you just try to come out with random numbers to fit the graph. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Mm, okay, I obviously as a presenter, I can't be showing you the full-fledged pedagogical move. But the question, your, your question can be only answered if I were to show you tractor again. And you need to invoke the data analysis. What happens in data analysis is you can do trend, uh, trend analysis, of which then you can actually get the numbers from the best fit line. So those numbers, rather than, so the question is, if I hear it correctly, is rather than guessing, can it be a more formalized way to train the mind, you know, where they get the numbers from certain places? The quick answer will be, I mean, without showing you, the quick answer will be yes, use trackers data analysis tool, do the curve fitting, get the coefficients, plug these numbers as your variable in your model. Then you will see a very solid uh, practice rather than guessing the numbers which I did. I apologize. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's for showmanship. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If not, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Um, so I on behalf of family team, we'd like to present you a token of appreciation. Tea break outside. At 2:30, we will start.